Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Thursday morning. It's December 16th. We are only seven days away from the 23rd of Festivus. We're eight days away from Christmas Eve and nine days away from Christmas. The man they call me dead, Matthew Thomas, the Mott's in the house. Good morning, Matthew. Hey, good morning, and we're a few days away from the official start of winter, although some might argue that winter actually uh, came last night. Yep, we had a big mess to clean up afterwards, but uh, we definitely had winter arrive last night. Uh, first off, Matthew, let's talk about what we cleaned it up with. Just kidding, we don't clean it up with collar no, but we wear that stuff. Yeah, you know, maybe if you had a, a Super Friends uh, shirt or a Nelson Family shirt, but uh, <laughs> that's, neither, that's neither here nor there. Um, if you want to advertise to the world that you are a professional wrestling fan, and I think a lot of people are going to want to do that after last night, there yeah. is no finer way to do it. If you want something that uh, says you're a wrestling fan, fits great, and is just uh, the epitome of style, head on over to CollarAndElbowBrand.com, enter promo code Linda K L I N D A K A Y, save yourself 10% that you can use to spend on some extra uh, Christmas presents or just extra collar and elbow gear. Like I said, it being the 16th, I'm going to get my Christmas shopping started probably today or tomorrow. We'll see when we get it going. Um, I ordered something off of Amazon for the wife. I hope she's not listening, but uh, that cheese is going to grate itself. So we got a cheese grater coming. <laughs> well, you are, you are in Wisconsin. Yes, we are. Hey, and you know, the the cheese grater that we had, we, we bought a top of the line, you know, uh, top of the line stuff, right? I was going to say top of the shelf, you know, uh, top shelf stuff. But, uh, you know, when you grate your own cheese, man, that thing wears out after a while. We snapped it. I mean, that pampered chef doesn't last 100 years. And it can also be advantageous if you ever find yourself in a hardcore match. Oh, Matthew, I know you're setting me up and let's talk about it right away. Uh, there is a report coming from TMZ uh, online, TMZ Sports, that um, a referee had been stabbed by a wrestler named Hannibal, was paid 75 bucks to bleed. So the referee went off on the, uh, excuse me, the wrestler Hannibal goes off on the referee, paid 75 bucks. He was taken to the hospital for multiple stab wounds. This got out of hand quick. Folks, this, I'm going to make this real clear. This is not wrestling. No, this no. This just nonsense absolutely yeah i mean that's we're reporting on it because it is in that industry but yeah this is uh this is absolutely ridiculous well there's many of uh the professional wrestlers that are responding to this uh, you know they may have been trained by somebody they may have been told that it's okay to do it but this is not necessary nor is it acceptable so um we're talking about it becomes national news and you know when we go you know, a year, five years, 10 years, where we've got a wrestling business that's getting respect from all the national media and then we get yeah. a story like this again. Absolute nonsense. Yeah, no, I, you know, and I don't, uh, I, it's, it's really no words to, to describe it. I mean, it's an assault is what it is. Let's get into happier news. Young Rock, you a big fan of the Young Rock? Uh, I, I liked what I've seen. I can't say that I've watched it on a weekly basis. I need to catch up on the, uh, the young rock. I mean, before too long, he's going to be like, uh, you know, teenage rock or uh, adult rock. If I don't. Well, there's three it. rocks in the show. Yeah, yeah. So I, as, as opposed as opposed to that show from a few years back that was a uh, thirty rocks, right? Right. Third rock, not thirty rock. Oh, but they thirty filmed, rock is also another one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thirty, 30 rock, rock at thirty rock color square. <laughs> In the show Young Rock, you've got 1982 Rock, you've got 1987 Rock, and 1990 Rock. 1982 is like a middle school kid, plays baseball. 87 is high school Rock, and 1990 is Dwayne Johnson at the University of Miami, right? So um, what's very cool about it is last night we had an episode of Young Rock, which was titled Young Rock, A Christmas Peril, that aired on NBC. And uh, be honest, I love the show, and I love the different rock uh, stories that come throughout the uh, episodes, plus the cameos. And I want to say it's cameos. It's more so different characters that have come up through Rock's life that have, you know, kind of intertwined and given him, you know, uh, guidance and given him, you know, uh, really mentoring. But, uh, you know, they're always cast for a Vince McMahon lookalike or a Ric Flair lookalike or a Macho Man lookalike or Andre the Giant. So, Matthew, thoughts on Young Rock and the new season coming up? 
you think uh, 1990 Rock, you think he was watching Funhouse in his dorm? Because that time frame would line up. Uh, Not if he know, was pretty, in college, he wasn't. Pretty pretty correctly. No, I think it's cool that you've got that out there. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a very interesting type of storytelling. And, hey, I mean, he's reached that level where – there is enough people interested in the rock that he can do a, you know, semi autobiographical sitcom and get some viewers. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad it's had success and, and glad there's a second season coming. Up. Now, this episode was a one off in that part of season one or the upcoming season. It's just kind of like a, a yeah. side little issue. But uh, the season will start in March of 2022. They're still currently filming in Australia. The way down on that. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's good news that it's been as successful as it has and, and more power to him. Killer Cross. That's not a name that we've talked about a lot, but we've talked about Karrion Cross, yeah. right? Killer Cross no longer with the WWE slash NXT, uh, but it looks like he's joined EC3 and Adam Shearer, formerly known as Braun Strowman, in the uh, Control Your Narrative brand. I like what EC3 is doing. He's making himself a nice little group here that can go to independent shows. They can show up on Ring of Honor as they did. You know, even though Ring of Honor shows are done for a while, these guys can come in as just this group and just take over. These are monsters. These are just, I mean, beasts of men. And keep in mind, with that forbidden door open, you know, I mean, he's quintessentially building himself a stable that uh you know outside of company control yeah outside of company control that could honestly work in some type of invasion angle it's it's absolutely brilliant Brilliant. and uh this is all ethan carter so ethan carter has his own little shows that he runs that are called control your narrative and he has you know people show up it's like independent wrestling but for the 21st century so i absolutely love this yeah, I mean, honestly, it is it, it's reminiscent of a group who could run around from different, you know, territories. If you've got, you know, Impact open to it, if you've got AEW open to it, if you've got MLW open to it, I mean, you could honestly see a, a kind of a little back and forth stable like a fashion agent stable yeah, that, that just can not, go where they want. Yep, that you haven't seen since the territory days. That's fantastic. All right. Let's get into a little bit of AEW news before we start talking Dynamite Winter is coming from last night. Number one on the merchandise list for AEW was CM Punk for a long time. Do you know who got uh, taken down and who replaced him? Uh, I do know, and uh, that would be Hook after his uh, fantastic debut on Rampage last week. This kid's got something. Yeah. And he's not doing anything, right? Other than turning away from the opponent and just grappling the hell out of him. Yeah. It that's it's literally 2021 Taz smaller and in better shape. And there is a bit to me of a more believable uh, non suspension of disbelief required Orange Cassidy. Because there's no. an in, there's an indifference about him. Yeah. but There's an indifference and in this, you know, the, this, you know, badass that when the bell rings is there, man, I, I think there's, there's really no. something in that package there. You know what he looks like to me as I'm looking at the picture right now while I talk about this? He looks like a legitimate Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're talking about like internet in 21st century, 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets those boxing matches against this person, that person. And while he can do it, you know, he's not maybe the top level, top tier. This kid looks legitimate like that. Yeah, no, I can see that. And a very interesting ring presentation, too, in the trunks. Not your typical wrestling ring presentation. So, and I mean, he's he's had a lot of fanfare built up on the internet. You know, I mean, that's all that a lot in of, a bag of chips. Yeah, and my goodness, but when you're moving merch like that, man, you're you're firing on you're firing on some cylinders right there. Wow. All right, let's make our way to AEW Dynamite. Winter is coming. Winter has arrived. Matthew, last night's show. Opened, and you know, I was thinking before the day because this is what AEW's done yeah. for me, Matthew. I don't know about you, but as it's coming up to Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, or whatever time zone you're in, I'm thinking about the card a couple hours beforehand. Oh, yeah, we got a big show tonight. I wonder what they're gonna do. I wonder what, if they're gonna put this match here or what. I think about AEW. WWE hasn't got me like that in a long time. No, no, not at all. I, I mean. 
it's it feels important and you know they they give you the card i mean week to week we know what's going to happen on rampage you know we know a lot of what's going to happen next week on dynamite but this was their big card they're building to you know they built it up as a pay-per-view quality show and you know before we run down the match i want to say right now i think that they deliver you know in, in my years of of watching professional wrestling not just us covering it but my years of watching professional wrestling last night they delivered what i believe to be the best match i've ever seen on free tv wow um i thought to myself in the grocery store as i'm getting something to eat for my my meals and thinking all right got to get back and uh, get back in time because i wanted to watch it it was appointment tv again for me Hey, did you buy right. did you buy some Virginia peanuts because Hangman was wrestling? I did not. Oh, uh, and I was not vegan. Sorry, Brian Danielson. But you know, I was uh, extra meat with cheese, if you will. Yes, yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. Just as long okay. as you don't join the, you, as long as you don't join the cult. So, in my thoughts, I'm wondering, this match is so big. Do they put it first? Yeah. No, they can't be. They got to make this the main event. Open it up with, I mean, you know, something else. But no, that's got to. Here we go, folks. 7 p.m. Central. Boom. Hangman. Brian Danielson. Go. And this was key. They never mentioned that this could be an hour match. They never mentioned. It says, the time limit is 60 minutes. And we're watching. And because you start at the top of the hour, you look at what time the match started. Okay. You get into 45 after the hour. 50 after the hour. Oh, my God. They're going to go for an hour. Yep. This is fantastic. And unannounced. See, that's the thing. I don't like Iron Man matches or 60-minute yep. matches that are pre-announced. Nope. Because you don't care about the first 55 minutes. Yeah. yeah. This was and, an unbelievable. And, I, you know, it's been years since I've watched it. You know, but I, I was not blown away with it the first time I saw it. And in subsequent viewings, I, I put this above Sean and Brett. You know, because of the suspension of disbelief. Not, that was an Iron Man match. And yeah, we knew yeah. It was going enough. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I think the storytelling was better here. It, you know, I, it my first indication that this was going to go a while was the back and forth at the beginning. There was nothing rushed. They were giving each other time. What I think just made this match was the non-traditional false finish, the non-traditional spot for spot that you see in a traditional wrestling match. This was probably 70, 75% Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson came out of this thing looking, I think much more of an imposing threat than he was when he went in. I mean, yeah, you knew the way he'd been booked in AEW, but my goodness, this was one of the, you know, not, not the bloodiest, not the bag of thumbtacks type of deal, but as far as the most physical, they didn't have to pay the ref 75 bucks. That's for sure that I've ever seen in AEW. Just the psychology here was so excellent. Um, just just a great match, hands down. And they didn't... It, it, and I mean, I go back and I compare this to stuff like Sean and Undertaker at, at 25, and it's like, great, great match. But how often did you fall into the trope of false finishes there how often did you rely on this person kicking out of that person's finisher? This was not that. I mean, it, it got you know, to It's funny point. you say Undertaker because there was a Tombstone pile driver delivered yeah, by yeah, Page. Exactly. You know, and there was a point in this match where, of course, I didn't want Hangman to, to lose in his, his first title defense, but it got to a point towards the end of the match where it's like, all right, Hangman loses here. I buy it. You know, I got to a point in this match that I very rarely get into professional wrestling matches is where I'm not trying to question the finish or figure out the finish. It's like, all right, they have got me bought into this as a shoot as I'm watching this. Like right. whatever, whatever happens, whoever wins, that's the way this story unfolds. And you're I'm almost protective of the match at that point because you don't want any stupid shenanigans. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Give me a clean not, shot. Not at all. Finish. Not not at all. But my goodness, for them to put, you know, for them to build to a match like this and and have it deliver. And and here's the thing. If this had been the other company, Meathead, and you start off with a title match, how high is the, is the likelihood that there's going to be shenanigans and it's going to, 90%. oh, hey, we're going to do this later in the night, blah, yeah. blah, blah. None of this hype, hype, hype that absolutely delivered and you know if if people come out today tomorrow whatever 
and and you hear people putting this in their top five matches of all time or their favorite match of all time. That is believable, man. This was so, so well done. And let me get to the this point, too. Um, what a good match for a what a good baby face performance by Hangman. Mm-hmm. You know, this wasn't 50 50 back and forth. This is your baby face champion in peril. Um, the color in this match when it happened made sense. Yep. Um, I, I mean, everything from from Dan- and you could not have gotten a match of this quality if Brian Danielson did not turn heel in Norfolk a month or so ago. If this was two faces that had especially him being as brutal as he has mm-hmm. been to the dark mm-hmm. and as brutal as he was in this match, if this was two faces that had respect for each other you would not have gotten this quality of a match. Just, just an outstanding, you know, five star, 10 out of 10, whatever scale you want to put it on match for me. This is, this is in my hand. What's your letter grade for it? How many stars in your letter grade? Oh my goodness. Uh, I give it an S for superb. (laughs) All right. But uh, I have one bone to pick as, I seem to do, you know, I'm looking to the poke a hole in it like Swiss cheese. I got a bone to pick. Commentary failed us a little bit in the last five minutes. Ask me how. How did commentary fail you in the last five minutes of this matchup? While I'm completely invested in it, commentary should have let us know that, hey, if Hangman can hang on for five more minutes, he gets to keep his belt. Now, again, while walking around the ground beef section, you yeah. know, the extra cheese or the extra meat with cheese section of my grocery store, uh, I'm thinking, how do you keep Brian Danielson strong without, you know, giving up the belt, uh, yeah. taking it off a page? And I did think of this earlier. Maybe they go to a 60 minute draw. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they go to a tie or a no, you know, or DQ or something like that. So. As we got to that five minutes, you know what? The the draw was 100% where it needed to be because Brian Danielson gets to say undefeated. Adam Page gets to show that he can go 60 minutes with the American Dragon. However, commentary mentioned none of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I will. I just will. A, let, just a nitpicking. Yeah. That's all it is, folks. Yeah. I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed everything. I'm just nitpicking. Well, hey, and let me shift to something on commentary, too. And, and I knew he was very, very talented. But, you know, in in Jr's absence, something that, you know, I've realized, too, especially during this match, is just how doggone good Taz is on commentary. I remember Taz being good on commentary. I just wish Taz didn't have the on-screen stuff that he does with his group yeah. and yeah. or talent. If Taz was just strictly commentary, Straight. I'd probably respect it. Yeah, more. yeah, you know, I and I can I can buy into that absolutely. Um, you know, I think just just Taz, you know, not pushing the Taz, you know, stable. Taz, it's just, right. yep. Not pushing his son. Not pushing. Yeah. Right. And just doing the commentary thing. Um, yeah, I, I think you're you're spot on. I am not a big fan of three-man commentary booths, but again, the team of Tony Schiavone, Taz, and Excalibur, fantastic work. Like I said, just one bone to pick. That That's it. The rest of it was unbelievable. Not a fan of three-man booths. How about three men in a bathtub? Uh, I'm not a fan of that, nor am I a fan of uh, three men and a joke, because we're going to move on, because I can't think of anything else. <laughs> oh, which, by the way, off the air, I got to tell you about the P-Wall. Okay, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and the Young Bucks backstage, and uh, you know what? This is a heel group getting heel heat, saying, look, Trent, you made your big return, and then look at what we did to you in Dynamite. I tell you what, next week, how about I take your mom's career, and we'll take that uh, the minivan, all that. That is fantastic work, by the way. You know, I got a request here, man. I just, uh, I, and I know they're doing their thing with the super click, but I'd like to see Cole and Bobby Fish away from the Bucks. Man, I just, uh, you know, the Bucks on commentary or the Bucks in promo, I appreciate much more in small doses. And, I, you know, when I see Fish, I guess here's what it comes down to Fish and Cole, I associate with their run in NXT, which. Air. I I take so much seriously than this incarnation of the Bucks and Cutler and the whole nine yards. Okay. Well, at least they didn't mention Cutler this time. Because, you know, the whole, all right, Brandon, you idiot, put on the camera. All right, Brandon, that's it. I don't want to hear that part. Yeah. Just cut your promo. Okay. So our next match was Matt Seidel and Wardlow with Sean Spears. Um, 
Matt Seidel was just run over, just uh, literally just freight trained over. It was weird that Spears was like, no, 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 we don't get paid by the hour, brother. Don't do another one. I, I guess they're teasing, obviously, the fact that MJF treats Wardlow like a, a punk in the group, says, oh, you got to go get the bubbly for MJF's win tonight, and uh, it's on you. Eh. Yeah, I thought we were going to get more Wardlow to be free. Yeah, I thought we were going to get more of a competitive match here. Um, you know, it, it's been... It's been interesting how Sadell has been booked. You know, I thought he would have been booked stronger yeah. uh, in AEW than, than he's been. I mean, it's some wins on dark or elevation here, but when he gets in these prominent spots on their main TV. Let me ask you that. You're, mm-hmm. uh, I was going to say, let me ask you this. They showed Wardlow's record for 2021. They mentioned how many match streak he's on. Why is he not in the top five? Yeah, yeah. Now, that's a, that's a very, very good question. Hmm. Uh, the vignette for Malachi Black was absolutely tremendous with the hooded member of the House of Black bowing to him and Black saying, no, you're more than a king. The house always wins. Absolutely. I like to see more of this and I like to see more of, uh, Malachi's paint is growing on his eye. Like it's an infect, like it's an infection. It's pretty slick actually. Yeah. I want to see more of him doing his own thing. I don't necessarily think having him buddy, buddy with Andrade, is the way to do it. Give me yeah. more creepy Malachi Black off to his own Black, game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing match between Hikaru Shida and Serena D, the woman of a thousand holes, the professor of professional wrestling. Shida gets the rubber match and uh, beats Serena D. Yeah. And here's the thing, too. I think as we kind of come to the end of the year, um, you know, may- maybe it's not all that it could be, but I think as far as accolades and most improved you really got to look at what AEW has been able to do with their women's division this they year did it. Um, we've complained a, for a, a year they did it yeah. Matthew. a year ago they were not in that spot and a year ago you would not have two top tier talents you know getting such a high profile match like this i don't they did it maybe they heard us maybe they already were planning on it we heard them but yeah. they did it they built the women's division this year absolutely absolutely Speaking of women's division, Julia Hart's not with the Varsity Blondes backstage with uh, Tony Schiavone after taking what was supposed to be Malachi Black's missed and ended up on Pillman's chest instead. But um, she's at home crying, and uh, Garrison said he's going to take on Malachi Black next week. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a continuation of the story. I think it's going to be a very, very quick match. Um, you know, probably get us to uh, something from Brian Pillman Jr. and taking him and, and Malachi Black down the road a little bit. Eddie Kingston cuts his promo and says he's going to team them up with, uh, uh, I loved PMP because it took me a second to, P- oh, and yeah, okay, I got it. Santana Ortiz, Pentel Zero Miero, and Ray Phoenix. So the five-man team of Kingston, yeah. Santana, Ortiz, uh, Penta, and Ray Phoenix. That's an amazing team right there. Yeah. Taking on 2.0, Daniel Garcia, and whoever they can figure out to join them. I'm willing to bet that it is going to be – it can't be FTR because FTR is going to have something else going on. But hmm, who could it be, Matthew? Who are the other two that join these gentlemen? Uh, how about the Briscoes? Ooh. ooh, ooh. I didn't, no, 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 that, that's not, that's not going to happen. That's what I thought was going to happen when FTR was in the ring and the white lights went down last night. But um, I think it will happen down the road. But, you know, if they, if they appear, it's not going to be here. Yeah, I don't think it would be on Rampage because Rampage would be taped. I don't think they would do that. All right, MJF is out. And, uh, you know, MJF, I worry about MJF being the number one heel in wrestling right now because of what he did in Long Island. Well, MJF came out and went right at, right at the fans. Come on, hit me, come on, hit me, snagging hats off the top of fans' heads. Yeah. Um, You know, (laughs) he called CM Punk the new Ryback. (laughs) But, hey, I mean, there was some truth in what he said. Punk was going for a lot of cheap heat last week. Oh, it was terrible. I couldn't stand it. Yeah, yeah. It was five minutes uh, about how your team sucks, which yeah. we had already seen the week before. Yeah. So, uh, you know, no, I mean, I think that, you know, and maybe there was some concern there. They went a little bit too much in one direction with MJF last week. So there was, you know, getting right back to, again, you got to see – you got to see your number one heel in wrestling getting booed when he's not getting booed by a crowd. Yeah, maybe it's his home city, but that's going to condition that crowd. Hey, they cheer him on TV. We'll cheer him here. 
Yeah. So I was worried about it, but I think we've recovered pretty well. Yeah. Uh, the singles match for the Dynamite Diamond Ring, MJF taking on Dante Martin in the finals. Uh, he did not get the single headlock takeover for the win, but he did get salt of the earth. Martin tapped out the winner and still holder of the Dynamite Diamond Ring worth over $100,000 now, MJF. Three-time Let me ask champion. You this. When, when we were speculating possible uh, appearances last night and debuts, why in the world didn't we throw out the name? The Ringmaster. This was a match for a ring. It would have been perfect for the <laughs> Ringmaster to appear. What? Sorry. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> but after the match, FTR come to the ring and uh, lift MJF on their shoulders. The lights go on in the arena. And at that second, Matthew, what did you think would happen? I thought we were because FTR. So here's the deal. Didn't know with MJF, but when I saw the FTR involvement, I'm thinking here come here come the Briscoes. You know, they worked FTR over the weekend in ROH, and there's been some, you know, comments laid out here and there. And I thought, okay, this is the lights go down, so I'm assuming we're getting the debut. Okay. What did you feel when the lights came up and it was Sting and Darby Allen? I felt a little bit of a a little bit of disappointment, but that was you know quickly alleviated by hey, remember what you got to start the show off with, and hey, this is probably good precedent for AEW to set because you're gonna get to a point several years down the down the road where you can't condition the crowd to always expect a, or a debut with this event, and right. if you do, you're just gonna be pulling at straws in surprise for the sake of surprise. Sting made some. You're gonna say it's the biggest surprise in the history of, and then you end up with Claire yeah. Lynch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, no, but then here, here's the deal. When they wrap this into what's going to happen in the Carolinas and what's going to happen in Greensboro, Sting wrestling in Greensboro for what the first time in, you know, 27 yes. years or whatever they said, FTR or Carolina boys, um, you know, it, there's so much that there's so much that makes sense here. And I, I think it, it's you're, you're building you're building a Greensboro and you are doing something that traditionally they don't do AEW. why what i think is feeding so much of the crowd reaction they're acknowledging the hometown talent they're building to the regions they're building to the cities which no company's done in a long time yeah so tony khan was uh teasing uh, the announcers teased tony khan would have a big match announcement well here it is because the crowd is chanting mgf says it here comes cm punk and it's a six-man tag for next week this is a big match and i think it's it's honestly it's a main event style match punk sting allen mgf and ftr and a couple of really good things here i'm glad to see ftr in this spotlight and i'm also glad to see that the audience was not disappointed the audience started chanting for punk you know that there was when the lights came off and up and there was not, you know, a surprise there, I was a little bit concerned you were going to get a little bit of, uh, you know, some, of some, some restlessness. You didn't. You didn't. And, and they, uh, you know, I, I think they hit, they have built up so much equity, you know, and so much goodwill in the fan base there that uh, just more That's power to them. That's a great point. They've built up equity and goodwill with the fan base. They haven't crapped on them. So, Tony, we thank you, Tony Khan. We thank you. Um, sometimes it's not what it lives up to in our head, but we trust you to give us good a good show. And you've done it again next week. Punk, Sting, Allen, MGF, and FTR. Absolutely. And uh, another excellent show, I think, is on the horizon. For Matthew Thomas, the man they call Meathead, we will talk to you guys tomorrow morning. We'll get you ready for Rampage, SmackDown, and whatever else comes across the table. So long, everyone. <laughs>